Thank you for logging in to today's webinar. So I'm gonna go ahead and share the screen so you I can see today's um today's PowerPoint. So I hope you all see them. So let me go. I'm gonna leave it here because I'm gonna to have to write stuff. Okay, so let me see if I can take this out. Okay, good. So, today's webinar is Return to Play. And what does that look like? So, okay, um, today's, as Ian, I have uh, some type of a background noise. You're doing the best, boss. Okay. Okay. Carry on. Thank you. Today, webinar is going to be very, very interactive. We're trying something new that I think is going to be exciting for all of us participating in this webinar. And uh, we're going to put a topic and we're going to give you one or two questions. And in these questions, you guys are going to, um, you're going to have or be in breakout rooms. We're supposed to have about 70 people. So we have done 12 breakout rooms. You will have three minutes. You will be able to use the whiteboard application, okay? Which is the one that is you're going to find them in apps. And the only problem with that is only one person at a time. On these breakout rooms, you're gonna have to figure out who is going to be the speaker because then when we get out of the breakout rooms, each group might have to give us some of your answers so I can record them for you, okay? So, continuing, so I, for review, interactive, we're going to ask one, two questions. There's going to be one that might have three questions, okay? 12 breakout rooms, if we have everybody, we're supposed to have about 70 people, okay? That is a great graphic of breakout rooms. About three minutes, it could be a little bit less, could be a little bit more, okay? whiteboard please try to use it unless somebody's going to take notes and then that person is going to give us uh, the answers of, of your group okay please limit the answers to the questions only okay so here we go these are the topics we're going to try to talk about today okay what are some considerations to return to play? So we, because of the time that we are living in, we're talking about social distance, okay? Maximum number of participants, what we're calling now gathering. Frequency, how many times a week are we going to be allowed to play? How is that gonna look like? And then facility availability, okay? So one thing that we need to understand that this webinar is not for a week from now. It's not for two weeks from now. It's not for a month from now. This is a general webinar. This, this can be used from today all the way to September, perhaps later than that. So when you giving your answers or when you chatting with yourself in the breakout rooms, you have to take that in consideration. One of the things that we're not going to do in this webinar is telling you when we're going to start because nobody knows that. Okay, so we're not going to tell you dates, okay, or we're not going to tell you uh, policy because we don't make that type of policy. That's the government who does that or U.S. soccer or USU soccer. We don't do that, okay? We're just going to talk about soccer, specifically talking about two main roles of a coach, which is planning training sessions and improving the performance environment or managing the performance environment. 
Okay. So here we're going to start with the first one. So for social distancing, the first question I would like you to start thinking about, how will social distances affect the behaviors of the players? Think about how they're going to be when they get out and how is this new normal is going to be and how you have to manage that. The second question for this top, this portion is what type of activities will you use to help the players? If we are talking about social distancing, how is the game going to change? Okay, so Ian, can we go to the first uh, breakout room, please? Uh, yeah, just a little bit of prep here. So I've assigned everybody to a breakout room. You you will be randomly assigned throughout the meeting. You should end up in a room with three or four. One or two of you may end up in a room with only two people. Loy, myself, Tommy, Tommy guys have the ability to pop in and out of your meeting rooms just to see how things are going, see if there's any issues with audio. Uh, so just bear with us through this period because it's the first time we're trying it. The breakout session is about to start. You should see a clock up on the center of your screen telling you when the breakout meeting would start and you'll be with different members from the participants. Okay. Breakout has started. There are some unassigned people. Uh, apps. Most all of the break, breakout rooms are filling up. Okay. Yeah. No, anybody that's left over either wasn't assigned or were joined just after we assigned the breakout rooms. Gotcha. Yeah, so you guys can have a conversation amongst yourselves. Um, let me share um, the PowerPoint for the people that are not in a breakout room. So. So for you that are not in a breakout room, these are the two questions we need to answer. How do I know if I'm in a breakout room? <laughs> You're not. You're not. Okay. <laughs> Karen Lawrence. Oh, Karen's gone. I don't know where she went. Ah, uh, this one. Oh, Hello. Hi. So, are you assuming that when we go back, we're going to also main, try to maintain social distance? At this moment, I, I am not assuming anything. It's just there. Okay. We don't know if if 
social distance is going to be still a part of it, but perhaps, a, a, you know, they might do the gathering thing. So we don't know that yet. So just take all, all things into consideration. This will be doing a lot of passing and shooting. I guess. Not so much defending. <laughs> hey, Lawrence, this is Tommy. Hi. How are you? I'm fine. How are you doing? Oh, just wonderful. Good. Basically, everybody's in the same boat trying to figure out when it does happen. Is it going to be the four step process or so they could just jump right into it. So we're going to have to be flexible and yeah, be able to prepare it any way we can. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, I never, I hadn't even thought about, you know, some of those. I mean, trying to maintain social distancing while playing soccer. Just... Uh -huh. So this is what this webinar is being yeah. done. <laughs> so coaches start thinking of the possibilities. Like this afternoon, I I was watching the news, and there is this a police department in Connecticut that is using a drone, and the drone is programmed that if it goes over a park, the drone can tell the police department if the people, if if a group of people are keeping social distances. So funny that they show it playing soccer, right? <laughs> like four before. And you can see how the drone is highlighting people. All of a sudden, when they get too quick, the drone speaks to them. And he says, please keep six, six yards apart or six feet apart. You need to keep social distancing. I'm telling you, I went like, wow. Can you imagine that in soccer? But how does it know if like you're a family group or something? It don't, yeah. I don't know. They didn't say it. it was a very short clip. So watch the news tonight and you'll see it. That's pretty wild. I like that. <laughs> yes. Boy, how long were the breakout rooms for? Three minutes, but I think it should have happened already, right? I feel like something happened when we went into breakout rooms. I know. Ian, are you there? He keeps coming up. He left the call. He's back in the call. I don't know if that means he's in another room. Yeah, I found out that uh, I can't go to some of the rooms. That's something we're going to have to check on, figure okay. out why not. Because we... So I was watching as we went into breakout rooms and we dumped a bunch of people. So I don't know if that's just because they're in other rooms or not. I don't know. Yeah. Tommy, what's up? Are you there? I'm here. Yeah, I'm bobbing in and out. Okay. No, I was just why I wasn't sure if we had lost you because I saw that you joined the call and left the call. Yeah, I keep bobbing in and out of every room. So far, we're doing okay. We've got one room. I ended up knocking it down to nine rooms. Okay, uh, one great. room has no people in it. Okay. But it's these are things we'll. I'll just keep bobbing in and out. Don't worry about me. If you've got any issues, send me something on a chat or a text. I might have to take notes for the slides. Because I don't think I won't be able to write. So, what organizations is everybody here in this group? Uh, Sterling Youth Soccer. Bur Burlington Youth Soccer, usually. Okay. I also coach on Block Island High School. That that is interesting. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> yeah, I bet. It's a different challenge. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine. Some social distancing right there. <laughs> Westfield FC. Mm. You guys are out there. So, 
I mean, what do you guys envision um, it, things looking like when you go back? When we go back? Have you heard anything on your end? No, I know we have a. There's a meeting tomorrow night. I think for um, Midland area mm -hmm. soccer. Oh. I'm not sure what the details. Well, we uh, have over, over, go ahead. We have not heard anything yet from the Federation of U.S. Soccer, so I guess you know. I guess that we're still waiting. I guess they're waiting to see what the deal is, you know, from the governments and stuff. Well, I'm sure the cancellation for schools in the state are going to dictate a lot, say a lot. Yes, it will affect. I would imagine. It's going to affect a lot of things, but we don't know. Obviously, we don't know how that's going to affect us yet. Um, right. Other than you won't get any permits for school soccer fields, so that's an issue. Very much. Um, I've been following Mass Youth Soccer, and, and they're kind of saying, you know, they're going to make any announcements as they go by, but, but that they want to make it happen no matter what, even if our spring season gets played in July and August and we roll right into fall. And on my soccer board for Westfield FC with the Root Soccer League, it's just a discussion of we're all volunteers and now you're going to ask these families who have been cooped up to go out and, and coach soccer from July Street through November. Um, we're going to run into issues, like you said, with the fields, with, with other sports, and when our permits expire and access to fields. We're on the really far western end of the state. I, I could be on the New York border and 45 minutes from my house, and we weren't as affected as the Boston area. So we're just getting our parks registrations. Uh, nobody's on the same page with restrictions, like the Westfield area is, but other towns just started. So we don't see everybody being on the same page. The mayor's out this way because we have much fewer cases than the eastern part of the state mm -hmm. are all over the place with when people can come and go and use. And th there's disparity in towns where some have 65 cases, some have 400. So we're going to be in a different version of the same boat as all you guys. Right. Yeah. I and mean, I think, I, I think it's I think a It's just they're more inclined to support what the leagues are going to do and what the membership is going to do. not trying to mandate anything to anybody it's just right. if we could get something in we're here to help you in that process definitely yeah i wonder if the meeting that midland is having tomorrow is to get to come to some you know agreement of here's our recommendation which mm -hmm. i'm not even sure anybody can even make that at this point it's tough to do it's hard to plan for anything really because nobody seems to know Right. what the next steps are I and mean, we're all it's kind of like waiting for the next shoe to drop so yeah i guess one of the questions is probably in those phases you know where does sports come in i imagine it's certainly not in the first first or second one i think probably in the third at least i agree but who knows Loy, I am about to end the breakout session and bringing them all back. I'm like Dr. Spot, no, I'm like Scotty. The yeah, engine no, just can it handle it. <laughs> we lost Loy. I don't know where he is. Did he go to another room? Oh, that's pr probably just as well. <laughs> <laughs> breakout session's ending now. Okay, did we get everybody back? <laughs> Oof. Everybody's coming back. Hey, Robbie, how you doing? So it looks like once we're back in the main one, we lose our whiteboard. So if we wanted to discuss, if there's supposed to be a discussion after that, um, all of our notes are now gone. Oh, uh, Jeff, I can't believe you didn't do a screenshot. A man of your capacity. Well, I saw we had seven seconds left, and I just didn't have it. You know, not enough time. But well, I bet, I bet, time. but I bet that you, I bet that you have a good memory. Okay? <laughs> we do. Okay, everybody's muted again. Loy, it's just you and I, so you can uh, 
ask a question and they can throw into the chat room any of their findings. Okay, so let's ask a question right here. Uh, how will social distancing affect the behavior of the players? So please feel free to write into the chat space up on the top right hand corner, write out some some thoughts or some parts of the discussion that you had with each other. Or you can, can they say them so I can take notes? Yeah, Lloyd, the first one from Jeff Post. Yes. Some may not want to attack the ball anymore. Said the main dumb, they won't attack the ball? Uh, that's one thing. Uh, Stephen Russo says players need to be more focused and cognizant of distancing. Uh, and Claudia says, hi, Jeff. Is this Jeff of Arlington? Apparently you're famous and have a fan club. Thank you, Claudia. Uh, Jason Hamelin, kids want to hug each other after being away so long. Well, that's a good point. That is a good point. Well, that's going to be some monitoring there. Can you hear me? Uh, Dave's, yes. So, I don't think the players might be timid or tentative to start out with, um, unsure what they can and cannot do. So, I think to work towards progress, we would have to perhaps have a meeting and establish some ground rules to be followed. Yep. Without a doubt, I think that's definitely the case. Uh, Pete says, we think it will initially affect the physical part of the game, less aggressiveness until they forget about it. Claudia may depend on age. Hugo, players will have to learn how to move the ball from left to right with long balls to keep them interested. Interesting, Hugo. Uh, Eric Parada, boys at a younger age, is very focus is very small if they work only on the individual skill. And Steve Russo perhaps suggested defending, delaying with lower intensity initially. And Henry Francillon, players and parents will have some anxiety about the new normal. This will be very interesting during games with the spacing required on the bench. Hydration stations need to be managed. And James McGill could affect their interest in participation due to not being able to play the game. So, Lloyd, I'll throw it back to you. Okay. Good, thank you. So, that was for the first one. So, I'm trying to take some notes as it goes. And uh, um, what about the second question, which is, what type of activities will you use? Well, I, one of the things we, we discussed was potential, you know, individual drills uh, for the player to work on their skills, okay? Um, something like that to get them going and get, like, you know, get the juices flowing back up um, and, and really asking them to work on things that they are not comfortable with, you know, which is what we usually try to do anyway. Uh, really, and the skill set that they are not very comfortable with. If they're right footed, say, hey, only, you can only do this drill with your left, make it challenging and make it difficult, but make it where they have to focus a little bit more on training for those drills. Okay. Anyone else? Yeah, we've got quite a few comments coming through in the chat line. Okay, could you give me uh, some of them that I can perhaps jot them down here? Uh, yep, Heather, larger grids, finding space, passing grid, passing drills. Garrow, work on long balls, similar to Hugo. Then as, the, as they get more comfortable, bring it in slowly. 
Jason Hamlin, passing, shooting, dribbling, more spaced out drills, perhaps smaller group drills if number of participants will still be limited. Uh, it's, it's moving so fast I can barely keep up. Jeff Post used social distance, distancing to have to have attacks find open space, potentially uh, maybe help with their spacing on the field, potentially. Um, Henry, we will stick we will stick to where's he gone? Henry will stick to play practice play approach, but the U shape when addressing players will need to be uh, figured out really essentially. Uh, Tona, we will have to take a phased approach, increase focus on individual development, increase space and deep Decrease direct contact when official recommendations require to do so. And Heather, distancing will be easier for practices, not for games. Interesting. See, one, one Deloitte, of the things, that, one of the thoughts, I'm sorry, one of the thoughts I had also no. is if, if the player shows up to practice, to training, uh, I would have to assume that the parents would have said something to them, especially depending on their age. If they're older, I think if they show up, I think the challenge would be a lot less, in my opinion. The younger players, the parents will say some things to them to avoid them. They may come wearing a full body suit for all we know, but I just think the older groups might be a little bit easier to manage. Could well be. Could well be. Yeah. Uh, and thank you for that. Uh, Paul Ahern. Uh, have any, this is a general question, we probably don't need a microphone answer to this, yeah. but Paul was asking, have, have any of you guys out there had a player diagnosed with COVID-19? So you can respond to Paul in the chat, you can react to the response to Paul directly if you like, as opposed to hitting the everyone, you can do the direct message back to Paul and that would work quite well. Okay, so... Because uh, we're, we're getting a bunch of no's right now, Lloyd, so you carry on. Thank you. I have to share the screen again. Okay. I don't know why it's not a... a... Can you see the PowerPoint? I guess not. Somehow it's not a allowing me to share the okay, well, you, well you can ask the questions okay good so here we go now we're going to talk about maximum number of participants the question of gathering question number one how will this impact team practice i repeat how will this impact team practice how gathering will impact team practice? Question number two, how will you organize the different functional groups to train and play together at games? How will you organize the different functional groups to train and play together at games? Um, Ian is gonna send you to a breakout room Please don't forget when you're using the whiteboard to take a screenshot. Thank you. Yeah, and for those of you that don't have whiteboard capabilities, don't worry about it. The breakout session is about to start now. Here we go. Rob and Tommy, we probably need you to jump in and out of a couple of rooms because it was uh, it was quite difficult getting in and out of all the rooms. So Rob and Tommy, Rob, if you take one through three, Tommy, you take four through six, and I'll take seven through nine. And we still have two people who aren't assigned. Uh, that's either because they're on the phone or for some other reason that I cannot explain. Because Lawrence isn't on the phone, and then I don't know. Um, there's somebody labeled as guest. I don't He's know. clearly on his computer. Yeah, both of I them. Am on my... <laughs> yeah. That's okay. 
for some reason. Right. He doesn't... Jumping into rooms one. <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure if I have the functionality to add him to a room. Uh, actually, I can. Lawrence is grayed out for some reason. Oh. Oh. You're not a real person, Lawrence. You're a virtual person. Not a person. real person. I feel like a real person. A guest. That's good. But we don't know who guest is. It must be the social distancing. You want to repeat the Henry question of... again? I guess, Loy. What? What did? Are... Okay. Yes. The questions are. And maybe we can talk about it here. Okay. It, it, somehow, because of this a, a, a breakout room, I cannot get to um to share the screen anymore. Okay. Question number one for number of participants. The question of gathering is, how will this impact team practices? How will this impact team practices? So, um, Lawrence, and I don't know the other gentleman's name because it's listed. He's listed as guest. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you guys have any? That, I, that would be you. Oh, I'm Chris. Hi, Chris. Hi. Um, I figure, I guess we're in our own little room. So, okay. do you get how, what do you guys feel about the question that Lloyd just asked? I guess it, it somewhat ma matters what that maximum number is, and but even so, I, I think again with the practicing, you know, you're going to just have to do a lot more. It just seems like skills and small, you know, small um, small groups that are distance apart. Mm -hmm. So, um. You need to think about this. If you are training a 7v7 or U10 team, which the roster could be anywhere between 12 to 14 players, okay, and and the rule stay as it is, which I think is 10 players. You, I mean, you might have to conduct a practice with half of the team in one side of the field and the other half of the team in the other side of the field because you cannot have all those 12 to 14 players together. Okay. So, okay. so that is, and that is, that's what we put in there. We more or less give you a hint in the question number two, which is how will, how will you organize the different functional groups to train and play together at games? So the functional groups will be the goalkeeper and the defenders, the midfielders and the strikers. So how will you do the practice and how will you combine the functional groups, okay, in order to get what you want out of the practice? I guess I, I, one of the questions that I would have is how are we even going to play a game if we have to maintain social distance during the game? That is an incredible question because that's something that when I was doing this, when I was doing this, I was thinking about that. Like, how are we going to practice if we cannot play a game? How are we going to play when there is this gathering? But what a lot of people might be doing instead of playing 7v7, let all the games be 3v3 and 4v4s. But even there, I mean, you can't, you know, how are you going to tackle someone, for example? How do you avoid not getting within six feet? Okay. Uh, so, I'm, wondering all, I'm wondering altogether if they're going to even allow sports until you can have larger groups. I mean, that's a question that has to be looked at because of all of these issues. I mean, so you can break your practices down into smaller groups, but... How do you play your game? Unless you play a 3v3 game, you cannot play anything higher than that. And that's, and then when but, you then, listen, but then you have the problem of the facility, right? How many 3v3 right. teams can you put in one field? Because now you're still doing indirect gathering, right? Right. 
So, okay, so how will this impact STEAM practices? I, I will say it will be, um, it will have a major impact. Organization, I mean, a whole bunch of stuff. But what, why don't we come up at least with two bullets that we can put in here? So in a case like mine, we actually, our whole league practices at one field and as is everyone gets only half a field. Functionally, I would have to have, uh, I would have to have different team members practicing on different nights and they would see each other on game day. <laughs> you know, yeah. or you know, the, 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 the additional coaching staff to break out and work with the kids, even if you just go work in off field areas would be key. Um, at the very least. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a problem, isn't it? Yeah, yeah every, every team might need three coaches to break it up into threes and the whole benching area. And you got to pick either mom or dad can come to your game this week. And, you know, a, a lot of it is no matter what we do, at least I've talked to the mayor of my city is, he said it, it goes by the park and rec, they follow the health department, they follow the mayor, he follows the governor. So. There's a lot of other people at play or someone shows up and says, you've got too many people, shut all the games down. Mm -hmm. We have trouble and getting people to bring their dogs to a field and we got 30 signs, never mind people from different towns coming up and well, in our town, we do this, but we thought it was okay here and everyone's showing up with fight. It's, it's a lot of moving parts. Which is why I think it's not going to be I think it's going to be a unified decision throughout the entire state. Hi, Ian. How are you? Yes, I'm going to. I'm going to bring everybody back in thirty seconds, just so you know. Mm -hmm. Ian, can you see my my screen sharing? Because I'm supposed to be sharing the screen, but I I, I don't know if you can see what I see. I just see no, a blue screen. We see a blue screen. Uh huh. Okay. Now I see everybody again. Yeah, because the problem I have is I go to screen sharing, and it it's not coming at you. So I'm just gonna tell the the questions because when I go to screen sharing right now, it's going into the internet. I don't know why. It says you're sharing your presentation, so is something happening on your computer? So that was a nice, nice, uh, nice thought, Tommy. But as soon as I hit new screenshot, that was it. It went away. <laughs> okay, so uh, in the group that Tommy and I were, we really uh, uh, talked about a lot and uh, how this um, gathering question questions uh, are a little bit complex. So. Who can give us at least one or two bullet points for the first question, which is, how will this impact team practices? Yeah, we, get, we have your email now, Loy. You do? Oh, it's mine. Yep. It's oh, mine. It's great, isn't it? It, it is. Can you, can you see that? It's gray. Now it's gray. Okay. Okay. Don't worry about this. You just continue chatting. Okay, we are. Okay. So um, let's have a group giving us at least perhaps one or two bullet points, uh, and then we can perhaps get about up to five or six. So I would like to have some answers for the first question. How will this impact team practice? Anyone? Uh, I, I can jump in. I, I think I think there could there could be some blessing in the skies where you break it up by function, so mm -hmm. you get you know four or five players defensively to work together with the goalkeeper, you know on the things that you usually don't necessarily have a lot of time to work on too often, mm -hmm. which is moving together, you know defending as a unit, you know setting people off to be offside, using the goalkeeper, you know opening wide, all those things. How do we control the ball? on the backfield and build up from the back. The same thing with the offensive side and the midfielders, you can do the same thing with them, break them up into small groups and talk to them and give them some plays in terms of movement and things that they can do to work together. 
And, and then at some point, obviously, you're going to have to bring them together to talk about it and maybe do casual observations. So the offense get to watch the defense run some of those drills and vice versa and things like that. Okay. Okay. So what I put is divide the groups into small functional groups. Okay. And I'm, what I mean functional is the goalkeeper and defenders working together or midfielders and attackers want to working together or defenders and midfielders working together, etc., etc. Okay. Um, uh, anyone with a few more uh, bullet points, please? Yeah, Lloyd, can you hear me? Yes. For question number one, how will this impact the team practice? Yeah, I... Uh... I think it goes without saying that, one, the coach's role needs to be more involved than ever. You really need to be paying attention to what they're doing. I think it's going to be tricky if you are separating them into smaller groups, and if there's only one coach, you really have to make sure they're not chit-chatting with each other, getting close together. I think how it affects some of our, some of our drills. Uh, I'm probably going to be doing less drills and doing more of the play just because the drills that may involve waiting in line where they're just sort of waiting in line – you're, they're just going to be close together. So I'm going to have to come out with some drills where if there's any sort of waiting in line, which there always is some, rather have them walk separately in, to recover from, well, otherwise they're going to exhaust themselves doing drill after drill. Uh, but I think more of the play practice play is going to be more play, play, play. So if if you play in a 3v3 and you have a group of, let's say, uh, a group of eight, okay, so because it's six playing, okay, and then they have the other two players, and instead of being side by side, they are in opposite ends, so that they're not, you know, they're not breaking the gathering, but also they keep social distancing. Is that what you mean? Right, right. Okay. Uh, what about one more? And in this, in this uh, question, how will this impact in practices? Right. Uh, one of the things that can also be. Uh they're impacting in this other than the kids is going to be the parents because you know when the kids come to the field and they see the ball and they see the net they want to run they won't even really pay attention to the virus or to the whole conversation it will be the parents who will say to the kids oh make sure that you stay away from everybody like make sure you keep away from everybody and that's going to be the harder part in order to make those players the, their parents are telling them not to be too close to the players to be into the whole uh, into the whole training, into the whole practice. Because I mean, I know there are some moms that are very protective of the, over their kids. That I so, I even already hear some of them that say, "Oh, I don't want my son to be um, playing. Can he play with a uh, with a mouth cover?" I say, "If that makes you feel better, I mean." Even though that might be a good suggestion to everybody have a a mouth cover, but um, that's <laughs> interesting. Okay. So what I put for that is what are the parents' instructions to their child? Okay, and and that can be listen. I don't want you ever to be, you know, closer than two arm lengths, or I want you to play with a mouth, you know, with a face mask, with a mouth cover. Yes. What about for question number two? How will you organize the different functional groups to trade and play together at games? I will stick to the small side in the play practice play, but uh, organize the field based on the, the state's uh, guideline for how many players can be in that within that space and separate the practice areas, just giving more space in between each other. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be difficult in games to, to set that limit, um, that space. I think in practice, it could definitely be manageable. I think the game though, there's no, I mean, once you, the two of you going after the ball, like nobody's going to, I mean, depending on this, the, the, the kids, um, they're not going to back down. And you're, you're within six, six feet of distance. So I think um, maybe, maybe like having some kind of gear to protect them um, might be like something that they could use um, to get around that. I don't think you can get around the, the play, the game. Yeah. 
Yeah, Loy, this is John Volpe. Right, soccer is a high intensity sport. When you defend, you have to work to recover the ball, and there's going to be some contact there. I, I think one of the things yeah. we discussed was maybe hand sanitizing at, at half, because if you are going to make contact, it's a contact sport. Uh, maybe yeah. hand sanitize before the game, at halftime, and then after the game. Maybe that's a recommendation we can make to the players. We yeah. talked about, oh, so what about uh, um, gloves or, about, or like a sleeve. Okay. Um, so, okay, so hold on a second. We're using hand sanitizing gloves. Okay. <coughs> Any what about pennies? Um that's something that's gonna be part of a mandatory uniform or two sided penny that's assigned to the players because the coaches with carrying bags of pennies, I don't think that's uh I think that's done with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great point. So, okay, so what about assigning the pennies to the kid? Say to Billy, Billy, this is your penny. It is your job to bring it to every practice and wash it after every practice. What about that? Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. Easy fix. <laughs> if they bring it. John, John Volpe, you had a comment you were going to make? Yeah, I, you know, I think we need to take a step back a little bit here and think about the realities of, of, you know, are we going to be able to play a game in a situation where there are still restrictions on the number of people that can be grouped together and, and or physical distancing? Um, you know, training is one thing, and we might be able to manage that. But when you yeah. talk about games, you talk about games between towns, between teams that are physically distant from each other normally, um, you know, that's a much bigger risk than the training session itself. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 would, it would be irresponsible to, to have a game until this whole thing's blown over. So, I mean, I, yeah. this is not reality to have any sort of a competition until we can go back to normal. Until then, it, I think it's more about, you know, if, if we can do practices, yeah, how can we how can we do that in some limited capacity? Excellent point. Thank you. So what I yeah. put there is perhaps no games right, until we right, achieve. Right, right, yes. Right. Move on. I'm moving on. We're, we're record we're recording it and we're going to po post the presentation online so you can move on. Okay. Next one. Frequency. How many times a week? That is the headline and the qu number one question. How will you organize the groups for your week's training session? I'll repeat. How will you organize the group for your week's training session? Question number two. How will this impact your practice schedule? How will this impact your practice schedule? And question number three. What will determine your schedule and the group training? What will determine your schedule and the group training? Okay, all this in base of players and team needs. Please, Ian, uh, send them out to breakout rooms. Thank the breakout you. rooms will start now. like having a time machine this it's incredible uh, so for some reason Chris and Lawrence you are grayed out and I do not have access to move you to anywhere I don't okay, know what okay. function or setting you, you've got but yeah yeah that's why you've ended up in the main room the whole night but it may or may not be the worst place to be I like it <laughs> okay yeah I'm right, Robbie's here time, I kicked Tammy out to go to a room. All right, I'm going to jump into 7, 8, and 9 this time. Yeah, we actually go all the way to 11, so if you want to take uh, 7 through 11, that would be good. I'll go yeah, 1, okay. 2, 3. Sounds good. All right, I'm receiving a presentation. Everything is blue again. Lloyd, I think you're – yeah, there you go. Yep. I just, I just, I'm keep trying how to put the PowerPoint on, but it's not working it. 
I guess he has I, I some. Think, yes. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, I, I think that uh, the idea of having an actual competitions is really the, going to be the big question. And when are we going to be able to actually have those those actual competitions? I mean, otherwise, I, I can think of a lot of ways of, of having practice sessions, but again, even with practice session, part of the fun is that you have the competition, you know, even within your, your group and everything. So, you know, I could think of a lot of things that I would love to do and would be able to do, but I don't know how much, you know, the kids would want to be doing that week after week. Mm -hmm. And especially if they don't have the, you know, the yeah. sort of the treat at the end of having the um, the actual game. Yeah. You know, no, I... and, and even like even like the small formats, you know, they they used to always be a three v three competition, you know, fall classic kind of thing, and that was mm -hmm. a lot of fun. Everyone would love to do that. But there's, you're still, you know, it's a competition, and there's going to be the co the contact. Well, we, which is good, but in this question, we need to think it. If we can practice, okay, then it will be depending on on what I saw in the game. So if I want to work with my defenders, then the first day of practice, I work with my defenders, okay, and and then the second day of practice. I will work with the other rest of the team. So it's, it's how am I going to manage that? So if I have to keep gathering and social distance away, then day one will be my defenders, which will be, you know, the um, what can I say? The goalkeeper and three defenders. And then what, what I will do is work with them. So that if I got 14 people, I can bring seven people that day. And then for the next day, then I work with the other group I didn't work with. So in reality, the kids only have one one day of practice, but you are on the field two days. And you're keeping it to seven people. And then if the guideline, it is right now 10 people, you are below the guideline. Right. Okay. And, and you still can play 3v3. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Okay, one sub. So that is what we want you to think about. Okay, what do you think? So for me, that that's what I, I think I would do. I'm in a unique position where my team's moving from 9v9 up to 11v11 this year, but I'm thinking I split the team into two separate days. There's no At, at this point, I'm not even concerned about games. I, I think you're, you've got a certain age group that are at a very big developmental stage where they, they need to be outside. I think come September, the parents are going to be kicking their kids outside. If hopefully they're back physically at school and everybody in the world is having to make changes, if they're, if they're changes, mm -hmm. they're getting out and getting exercise and learning skills and at least advancing, but there's no games, there's no pot of gold at the end, they have to be aware of that, and they just need to be taught by parents and coaches long term. In a year or two, you're trying out for high school, and this may be long blown over. You still need these skills, and it has. We always preach: you learn more in practices than you do the game. Sometimes it shows the result of your efforts, but the practice is where they're really going to learn. So that's what uh, my aim right now is. I totally agree with you. I I I, I will say that for the near future. This is just me talking, me, my personal opinion, is perhaps no no games in the summer, just practice with 3v3s. And you can have two games of 3v3s on, on, a, on a, you know, U10 teams going with enough room that there is plenty of distance, no gathering, right? And you still can keep... You know, for the spectators, you can keep a, a social uh, distancing. And then the parents, very far away. Very yeah. far. Which, when I, say very far away, when I say very far away, don't, don't get me wrong. It's about 15, 20 yards away. You know what I mean? They still can see the kid. Yeah. But, but 
You know what I mean? And then they have to also keep that. That that that's what I would like to see. That's that's easy for me. I'm also the director of fields. I just push that orange line an extra bunch of feet back. I'll I'll tell you, I, I think we're gonna have this problem again in the fall. I work for uh, one of the state universities and they're already talking amongst themselves about all not having students back on campus until January because you can't put three or five, five kids, six kids in a room in our apartment from all around the country. Like, I think there's gonna be an abundance of caution and I think we're, there's a real chance. They're talking nope. about the NFL not starting on time. We, we may be able to come up with a module for practices. I'm not even planning that we might be playing versions of games in the fall. Hey, I have a thought. I mean, what what you did last week with with some of these sessions, good night, maybe this is a good time to have talk to them about goals, set up individual goals, and then work exactly. with them to accomplish that. Yep. I mean, that's something I've always wanted to spend more time with with my players. And maybe this actually is is a way of doing that. It it, it would be, but like uh, um, what we are talking over here is that perhaps I mean uh, the parents love the game more than they like practices. They're, uh, they're, <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay Joseph, <laughs> listen. We think that the kids love the game more than they like practices, but. Yeah, I want you to pay attention to kids. There's going to be that kid that is the gamer. But sometimes you really truly see who a kid is in the practice instead of the game. Yes. One minute. Thank you. Correct. So sometimes you're going to see the real kid, the real Billy, the real Tommy, more in practice than in the game. Because in the game, there is certain variables. How many times does Tommy get in the game? Okay. So if Tommy is not one of your best kids, some coaches don't put him that much. But in the other hand, in practice, Tommy is playing all the time. So if I am Tommy, I love practice more than I love games. <laughs> if we're doing our job right. <laughs> huh? Well, if I mean. we're doing our job right. <laughs> There is no reason how not to, because practice, they ought to be involved. In the game, I understand that you only have seven players and then the other seven stay out, okay? And they understand that up to a point. So I, 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 I will say that perhaps a season with nothing but practice with like about a 20-minute game at the end of practice, I think that would be okay. Okay. Sorry, so he, <laughs> that's okay. Wrap up, Loy. Wrap up. We're at an hour. Okay. So we only went through this uh, six slides. We have a few more, really. So that is okay. So very quickly, uh, one or two points for the first question. How will you organize the groups for this week training session. Anyone quickly? I mentioned uh, maybe breaking the team into two. Maybe if I get to practice two hours, uh, I bring half of the team one hour and then uh, get a 10 minutes break in between so I can allow the, the other half of the group to come down and, and practice. I can set it up into a defender and a strikers and then uh, Midfielders, midfielders, we uh, maybe a goalkeeper or something like that. Just to continue my my strikey, my strikers trying to go through defenders and my uh, my midfielders uh, communicate with the goalie. Okay, great. Okay, uh, what about in the next hand? Next one. How will this impact your practice schedule? Practice schedule in my opinion, is going to be dictated by the organization, which is probably going to take their lead from the state.
the organization and the state guidelines, right? Yeah. Okay, what about, what will determine your schedule and the group training? What are the team and player needs? Lawyer, I've, made, I've muted most everybody, so we, we're looking in the chat room now. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and again, I would be preparing to wrap this up because we're at 8 yeah. I am. I'm going to jump. Okay, thanks. Okay. So now we're going to go to the last. We were only one main point that we didn't cover. But I, I really enjoy your conversation and your uh, way how you interacted with each other in the breakout rooms. Thank you for your participation. Uh, I will stay on for another five, ten minutes if you have any questions. You all have a good night and God bless you and keep safe and wash your hands. Thank you. Nice Don't forget we've got webinars. Thank you. We've got webinars again. tomorrow at 10 o'clock. We have tomorrow and at webinars on Friday at 3. What about the webinar tomorrow night? I'll be there. Okay. Good job, Lloyd. Thank you. Thank you, Ian. No, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Bye, thank you. Hopefully, the breakout rooms weren't too clunky. <laughs> so, I, I would say on those. Don't use the whiteboards uh, because they tend yes. to disappear, and then you you lose everything on them. And then once you go back into the main session, they're they're gone as well. So you're better off well, taking notes just on a notepad. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. Um, so I've muted everybody, even Loy. And if you could just leave us some feedback as to how the breakout rooms were, even if it's just an okay, uh, bad, good. Whatever you want to write in there, it's our first attempt at using them. So that'd be real helpful feedback for us. We do plan on using the breakout rooms tomorrow for my webinar at 10 o'clock on reasonable expectations for players during the stay at home period. And then we'll be utilizing it again on Friday with Tommy. He's going to talk about trials at three o'clock on Friday. So thanks again for every, everybody's uh, attention tonight. We did well, we stayed on the line with 30 some of you. And as Lloyd said, he'll stay on for another five or ten minutes. If you've got any questions, he will be available to answer. I will now unmute you all, but thank you so much for your time again tonight. Thank you. God bless you. Have a good night. Wash your hands and stay safe. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love that Brazilian church. That you do. Lloyd. Yes, sir. I'm wondering, are we still teaching soccer at this point? Is it really even possible to have a game? <laughs> As of today, no. Unless you can have the game on an Xbox and play FIFA 11. That's the only game we can have. Okay. We have lots of opportunities for Xbox games, though. Excuse me? But we're running a competition for Xbox. <laughs> Listen. When the time comes that we can't have, we get back Rob. together again. Rob, yeah. the only video game I ever Lloyd, played. Lloyd. Yes. Lloyd. That's a question. Oh, yes, when question. Comes, when the time comes that we can get back together again, Basically, yep. we're going to end up with nothing more than technical training. So doesn't that put the entire play, practice, play um, routine totally out the door? We spent many, we spent years moving, trying to move people to do that. And, um, you know, finally it's gotten some traction. But now that exact process is going to bring kids together. Uh, well, I Dave, first off, that, Loy, I got this one. Okay, go ahead. Dave, Dave thanks, for your, thanks for your question and your insight. Um, it's probably right on track. Uh, of course, the future is unknown for everybody, and it's certainly uncertain. I can't imagine a return to play that has any kind of social, and I'm just speaking for myself. I'm not speaking for Massachusetts Youth Soccer. 
So you can take this on board as any way you like. I can't imagine a return to play that is going to involve any kind of social distancing or chance for reinfection or reinflammation of the uh, the virus surge that we probably still in the midst of, if all truth be known. So I, you know, your your point about um, technical training may be the the route for the future for the foreseeable future because of the social distancing. Uh, it, it could very well be the way, but you know, the, the purpose really of this webinar was to say, hey, look, we don't know when it's going to happen, but let's be ready for when it when it actually does, because that's probably the only thing that we're quite confident of is that eventually, whether it be in six months, twelve months, eighteen months, even heaven forbid, that mm -hmm. we will be ready because we've prepared, because we've thought about it. Um, but yeah, your your point is well met. We don't know what the future holds, essentially. Do you have to take temperatures? You might. No. So, Ian and Loy, I, I have a question about, um, you know, obviously it depends when we're ready to get back to playing and practicing, and that's obviously dictated by the virus, it's dictated by the governor, uh, it's dictated by the schools, probably. So, let's say schools are ready to go back in session in September, and obviously parents will be concerned, but if it happens, and that's probably a best case scenario, if parents are comfortable having their kids go to school and then sit in classrooms together, obviously they should be comfortable with those same kids being on a field further separated apart than being in a classroom. Um, that we may, we may need to be prepared that if kids go back to school, there may be a mandate that kids have to wear a mask that covers their mouth and nose through the whole day. Uh, we may need to be prepared for kids to do that uh, in a game or a practice situation, which is crazy, it sounds like, on the face, because it's uncomfortable to breathe and to run and do, do whatever wearing a mask, but we need to be prepared for that. Um, like I was saying in one of the breakout rooms with uh, Guy Fee, um, just like when football started with leather masks and they had to go to big plastic or metal uh, helmets, uh, it was probably objected to, but obviously safer. But if everybody has to wear that on the field, then it's the same disadvantage. So, uh, again, and we want, we're probably looking for when those players wouldn't have to wear a mask or, or don't have to be six feet apart. But um, if we do have those um, rules placed upon us, are we prepared to supply masks or have a standardization for masks? So I guess the long, this is sort of my long-winded way about getting to the point of my question is, do we have, or do you guys have like a set of rules that you're putting together or guidelines in these different stages of preparedness? So like right now, if we had to play a soccer game tomorrow, what's the rules and regulations or safety guidelines that Mass Youth Soccer would want every team to be in, or, or to be in place for every game? And then think about what would, the, would those same guidelines be the same in, in July, in August, or a best case scenario in September where things are more open, we assume, um, or come next January, is there a ramp down of the safety where suddenly you may not have to wear a mask, but you still have to be six feet apart. Maybe there's no uh, defensive wall on free kicks or something like that where people are standing close together. So are you guys going to put together a list of rules? Are you taking suggestions? Are you putting together committees to put these safety rules in place and to discuss and debate whether they're necessary or whether they're useful or practical? Uh, what I'll say, Pete, is that we're in process and we have discussions weekly. We don't have anything down uh, because, again, it, it, there's just too many variables and too many unknowns. But yeah. You know, it's, it's not a bad thought. It's not a bad thought, and it's not a bad suggestion that we we need to. And it's for me that's it could be the essence and the beauty of of these little get-togethers is that we're able to have this exchange of ideas of things that we may need to be thinking about to be prepared for when we actually are allowed to get back out there and participate together. Um, so it can be certainly part of the ongoing conversation. But what I can tell you for sure is right now we don't have anything laid out, set in stone, but the, they are certainly on our radar and things that we're working towards and, you know, through everybody's assistance, we'll get there. Um, I also think that uh, all the rules or guidelines are going to come from either U.S. soccer, U.S. U.S. soccer, based on the government guidelines, 
and then they will be complemented with every state guidelines. Okay, so it will be our job to figure them out, put them together, and then yeah. spread them out to all of you. But, you know, we making our guidelines and for the state to say, no, they're not good enough. So we perhaps going to have to wait for them first. Okay. Yeah. Then the federal government, then, you know, the state and so forth. And that is where U.S. soccer and U.S. soccer will come up with it. They do have a team of doctors and are working with other doctors in other sports. Because right. other sports. And they, they would like also to have the guidelines even across the board in all the sports. Let's say uh, lacrosse, soccer, football, you know, hockey, you know, grass hockey. So all those scholastic sports are going to need the same type of guidelines. So, yeah, I, I think I think you're right. Um, I also think it's important to just put together a big long list from a bunch of different places. Like like I was already putting together a list in my mind and on paper, and then I joined this webcast. And uh, uh, I think I don't know if it was Heather had kind of mentioned like what are we going to do on the sidelines? And I'm like, oh, that's right, you can't have kids sitting on a bench. Maybe everybody brings their own chair and. Uh, obviously, you know, what are we going to do with bathrooms if there's like a bathroom at the field that everybody's using in and out? Do they remain open without wiping them down? Do you just tell parents there's no bathrooms at the field? Are we going to tell parents not to carpool or players not to carpool for practices and games for a certain period of time? So these are all like things that I'm going to put on a list that I'm hoping you guys can get. And I'm sure there's things I haven't even thought of, uh, obviously, that maybe if, we, if there was a group of folks that were working on this and they kind of just from – from practice to the end of a game, like what are the, you know, the risks that we can help mitigate at least. You can't be 100%, you know, foolproof, but help mitigate if we just had a, a list of preparedness that, you know, again, U.S. soccer isn't going to think of everything, but you guys aren't going to think of everything. But hopefully together we can come up with a list of things and then we'll see what's practical and useful and then slowly taper that down as things get back to normal. That is an excellent idea about creating a, a, a group that, like you, are, you know, brainstorming of what do I need? It would be nice if you can send us whatever list you come up with when you say, well, I think I got everything. And then yeah, you say, I think we need, best. I think, yeah, I think you're right. I think brainstorming is exactly right. Like my list is certainly not going to be comprehensive. And I think anybody here, if we all went our separate ways, put together a list. But I think if we all brainstorm together, um, yeah, I think it'll be quite comprehensive. And then, like you said, we'll just kind of whittle down to see what's useful and practical. Yep. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you, guys. Uh, anybody else got any questions? I don't know, but Jam is a thing very reflective in there. Right, Hermes? Uh, so let me ask, if if you don't mind, if, while while you're still on, could you could you just talk us through the uh, the breakout room pieces? Were they helpful? Were they not helpful? Was it too clunky? Did it really negatively impact what we were trying to achieve? Those those that kind of feedback, because that's going to be helpful for us going forward. I thought yeah, it was I like good the idea. breakout rooms. I thought they worked pretty well. Yeah. I think the only thing I mentioned in the chat room was uh, we didn't know when the break was coming up. We got the 10 second warning, so maybe if we can extend that to 30 seconds, that'll allow us to wrap up and include our thoughts and capture them right before we break. But other than that, we, we checked the participant list to see who else was in the group. People just needed to remember to unmute themselves once you get into the breakout room. Yep. Um, and and mm -hmm. for me, it, it kept asking me to read the, my microphone and uh, webcam, so uh, it might only be applicable people who have like multiple ones in the laptop or a separate camera. But other than that, it's pretty intuitive and I thought it worked well. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a What's that? I think it was I think it was a great idea and I think it allows us to have connectivity with other people at this point because the reality is we're not gonna be able to meet for any coaching session for some time. And uh, it gives us an opportunity to speak one on one with fellow coaches. And I think that's valuable. I appreciate that. I had you were saying something well, about the time. Having a group of people. Um, I thought it was, it was a great idea for timekeeping because um, you didn't have the option to keep talking. 
great. Thank you. Yes, yes. I, I mean, I <laughs> appreciate that. Hamas. Sorry, I must be on a lag or something. I keep talking over people. Um, I think it was great having, you know, two or three people because it definitely gave uh, people enough time to, you know, I guess, get their view across or get their, their views, um, you know, in the mix and definitely offered a good sort of discussion as well. Having like three people, two people, I think having it at two or three people was, was really good. Mm -hmm. so and smaller up numbers, up. smaller numbers gave you a chance to have you peace and also listen to the other per person's point. Okay. Yeah, I kind of feel like it wasn't just, um, you know, a bunch of people talking over each other. Like it was, uh, the group that I was in, I was in a two, a three, and a three. Um, I just think like three was the like or three, you know, screens was mm -hmm. a, was a perfect number. I'm sure you could probably get away with a little bit more, but uh, with the time that we had, I think three was the perfect number in this activity or activities. Sorry, but, yeah, three was really good. That's, that's my follow up question: Was the amount of time that we gave you inside there enough? Because we only managed to get to three out of the potential four that we had planned. Was three minutes I think, long I think enough? So. Even though, yeah. yeah. I think it was. I, yeah. think I, think it was I don't want to speak to anyone else. Time, I think you know, so. As long as you have an idea <laughs> when it's wrapping up. Yeah. yeah, if there could be a countdown timer, you know, that was counting down from three minutes to zero, I think that would be better than, you know, that 10 yes. second warning before the end. Yes. Well, we'll I see what we can I, do about that. <laughs> I, Ian, I, I, I think what we perhaps took more time is asking them for them to uh, have an answer. I remember repeating myself about two or three times until somebody decided to talk. So perhaps what we should say is group one, two, and three, you're going to be giving us the answer. Then group two, I mean, four, five, and six, you're going to give us the answer. So if they already know what are the groups that are going to give us the answer, so they're going to give us the answer no matter what, because they already know that they are that group. Yeah, they're right. on the hook for it, so they'll be ready to talk right away. Yes. yes. Yeah, I thought tonight as people interjected just to answer your question as opposed to using the chat. I thought in the prior, uh, the prior sessions we used the chat to provide answers, which Ian would read off, and I think you would manage the uh, the meeting. But if you take a different approach and just ask specific groups to, to share a comment, that should work too. Yeah. I think Thank it you. will work better because now there are going to be those groups that we have assigned are going to be more focused, okay, and they're going to then really be – the presenters for that short time in which they given us the answers. I think that is worth to give a try. Thank you, Lloyd. We'll do, we'll do that. No, thank you, Ian. We're in this together. Yes, we are. Uh, any, anybody else got any feedback, comments, criticisms, witticisms? <laughs> uh, this is me. Can you hear me? Yes, so, uh, so for me, Ian and Loy, uh, I thought the the chat room, uh, the breakout rooms were just a little awkward. It was just like like it kind of like you were going through the flow of the presentation, we're seeing the slides, and then it would come to this participation part, and then it's like a quiet room, and then I'm like, okay, there's three guys here, and only two of us were talking to each other for a while. Um, so I, I just thought it kind of breaks up the flow of the presentation. Um, it was nice because I got to chat you know, face-to-face -face virtually with, with a couple of folks. Um, but then I just thought it was a little awkward. I kind of I thought it slowed things down, so it wasn't a surprise that the presentation went long. Um, yeah. But I understand what you're trying to do, trying to have everybody participate as much as possible. I wonder if um, some of that could be uh, done this or accomplished through uh, surveys or polling. Or I did like submitting the, the responses through the chat um, because that way you can kind of continue with the presentation and, Maybe ignore the chat stuff that isn't uh, applicable or important, and 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 and, and continue with the presentation. So I, I thought flow-wise, it just kind of really kind of put every put the brakes on. Then you're in this chat room, and you know, and you're you know you you're answering some questions, and then when you're done discussing those questions, we're kind of waiting and for for that to the breakout room to finish. So I thought it was kind of awkward for the, given the time that you have or the limited amount of time you have for the whole thing. Um, again, if there's any way you could have interactive polling, interactive uh, surveys, or like you said, just pose a question out to everybody and have them put stuff in the chat, then you kind of can pick and cherry pick whatever you think is applicable or useful. Um, might be more worthwhile, but maybe that's just me. 
No, I don't. I don't think it is just you, Pete. But uh, all I can tell you is we're working on it. You know, that was the first time we've tried this breakout room. You know, I don't know how many webinars you guys have been on today. Never mind since we've been through this uh, stay-at-home situation. Yeah. But uh, most of them are people talking at me. Yeah. And yeah. I don't get a chance to have any input or any interaction with anybody else. And so I, you know, the thought process here for us was. Let's see if we can get smaller groups together and just develop what this is supposed to be a coaching conversation.